Hi everyone, my warm greetings to all of you. In this particular session, broadly we will try to understand the pattern of UPSC CSE's GS paper 4 that is ethics. We will try to understand that what is the nature of questions that are being asked in the present times and also in this particular session we will try to understand that what is the reason that you observe a huge range in terms of marks that are being scored in ethics paper. For example, you will find that many Decent aspirants, they are scoring marks in the range of 85 to 95 and then on the other hand, same year, same paper, many of the aspirants, they are scoring marks in the range of 140 plus. On certain occasions, you might have observed this thing that some of the aspirants, they have scored even the marks such as 145, even 150 plus marks have been scored. So, what explains this particular huge gap? What is something that needs to be kept in mind when preparing for this particular GS paper number 4. How you should orient, what are the things that are to be kept in your mind while you are preparing for this particular paper, all these things we are going to discuss. So, again I will explain, one, what is nature of paper, number two, how you should reorient your preparation and number three, why we have such a huge gap in the marks of GS paper 4. So, let's get started. Let's directly dive in the type of questions that are being asked. Fine. Now, first of all guys, you find this particular thing that broadly, there are two types of questions that are being asked in the section A, that is theory part. First type of questions are opinionated questions, are opinionated questions. Fine. And second type of questions that we have here, they are keyword based questions. They are keyword based questions. Fine. Quotation based questions can also be classified in your opinion only because they give you a quotation and they ask your views and that particular quotation or what do you mean by that quotation in present time. So, that can also be counted in the opinionated. Then questions are being asked on the governance, crisis of governance, RT, etc. Now, that is also the keyword based questions because unit 6, unit 7 broadly talks about administrative ethics. Okay, I'll show you this with the help of examples from the real UPSC papers also, don't worry. So, broadly we have two types of questions that is opinion based and keyword based questions. First of all, let's talk about these opinionated questions. Now, first of all, in opinionated, there are two types of questions that we have. Number one questions, where the nature of questions is very much generic. What do we mean by these generic questions? These are questions which you will be able to answer even if you have... Uh, not prepared about you if you have not prepared uh, for the ethics paper per se any person might be able to answer this particular these particular type of a questions without some kind of a uh, in-depth knowledge let me show you with the help of example then there are questions in the opinion based category where more specific more specific domain based knowledge is needed more specific domain based knowledge is needed. Now, if we go back to initial days, that is 2014-15, we find that opinionated questions tend to be more generic. Fine. Let me show you. Uh, here on the, uh, on the screen, I am showing GS paper 4, 2014. Okay. So, first question that we find here is that all human beings, all human beings aspire for happiness. Do you agree? What does happiness mean to you? Explain with examples. Now, anybody can write on this that what do they think is happiness, though obviously the nature of answer would vary. But happiness, what do you think? First of all, do you agree that everyone aspires for happiness? Fine, almost everybody will agree that yes, we aspire for happiness. And what does happiness mean to you? So, everybody will have a conception of happiness. Somebody might say that for me, Academic success is happiness. For somebody, they'll say that parents of my happiness, my, my, my parents' happiness is my happiness. Likewise. Then second question, if we read what it reads. So second question reads that what does, what does ethics seek to promote in human life? Why is it all more important in public administration? Okay. Again, very generic opinion based question. Fine. Then third question that we have is that in the context of defense services, patriotism demands readiness to even lay one's own life in protecting the nation. According to you, what does patriotism employ in everyday life? So, somebody might say that for me, paying my taxes on time is patriotism. Somebody might say that 
फॉर मी पेट्रोइटिजम एंटेल्स कास्टिंग माई वोट एटसेट्रा फाइन सो पॉइंट इज दैट हेयर इवन विदाउट द स्पेसिफिक कमांड ऑन एथिक्स पेपर यू विल बी एबल टू आंसर इट यू विल बी एबल टू आंसर इट सिमिलर टाइप ऑफ पैटर्न वी हैव फाउंड इन टू थाउजेंड फिफ्टीन सिक्सटीन ऑल्सो बट इफ वी गो बैक इफ वी सो कम टू ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू वी फाइंड दैट देयर इज अ क्लियर शिफ्ट दैट हैज है एंड लेट मी ओपन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू पेपर हेयर ओके so here we have 2022 paper now uh, let's read first question that we have here first question that we have here so first question here that we have it reads wisdom lies in knowing what to reckon with and what to overlook an officer being engrossed with periphery ignoring the core issues before him is not rare in bureaucracy do you agree that such preoccupation of an administrator leads to travesty of justice to the cause of effective service delivery and good governance critically evaluate critically evaluate fine let's read the second question apart from intellectual competency and moral qualities empathy and compassion are some of the other vital attributes that facilitate the civil servants to be more competent in tackling crucial issues or tackling critical decisions okay so intellectual competence is something that has always been given importance but beyond intellectual competence how compassion and empathy have now turned to be the vital attributes of civil services okay then let's go to the third question 2a rules and regulations provided to all the civil servants are same yet there is a difference in performance positive minded officers are able to interpret the rules and regulations in favor of the case and achieve success whereas negative minded officers are unable to achieve goals by interpreting the same rules and regulations against the case discuss with illustration okay so what question reads question reads is that officers officers who are positive minded they are able to find the way out even there are the rules and regulations they are able to find the way out and are able to deliver the social justice on the ground to people but negative minded officers they use rules and regulations to create a red tape and in that red tape often what happen many people are not able to get the social justice on ground so what we need to talk about here we need to provide that attitude of an officer plays an important role attitude of an officer plays an important role okay now when we talk about these particular kind of questions when we talk about these particular kind of questions again these questions are opinionated but the type of opinion that now is needed needs more domain based knowledge needs more specific knowledge needs some awareness with respect to the contemporary examples where such kind of thing can be portrayed now so first we found that questions that were opinionated they are continuing but from generosity from the generic nature they have now moved to the specific nature and domain based knowledge is required 2023 paper also i am going to talk about that where it felt in the generic capacity or in the specific aspect we'll discuss that also now secondly i told you that uh, one more type of questions that we have here i told you are keyword based questions now keyword based questions are decently they are being asked now understand this particular thing guys that when we talk about paper you see this particular thing that when we talk about paper in entire paper we have eight units eight units and these in these particular eight units we find that there are broadly 31 keywords that are there for, for example emotional intelligence is one keyword okay probity is one keyword integrity is one keyword empathy compassion is keyword so in total we find that there are 31 keywords that are spread across eight units of our syllabus and broadly on most of these particular keywords question have been asked and in gs paper number 4 upsc is uniformly asking question from all the different different dimensions basically code based questions cater to philosophy aspect then on administration multiple questions have been passed asked so same ways now let's take the examples here uh, let's uh, try to see the keyword based questions fine to the pyqs to the pyqs now even let's say we talk about 2022 paper when we talk about the 2022 paper okay so fine here we have this particular question 
asking about constitutional morality, conflict of interest, probity in public life, devotion to duty. Now, directly question are focusing on the keywords. Okay. If we go back, if we go back and uh, if we go back, then almost every year keyword based questions either on values, sometimes on emotional intelligence, fine or sometimes on attitude, they are being asked. So, keyword based category is something on which uniformly UPS is asking questions. Now, let's talk about 2023 paper. Let's talk about 2023 paper. Okay. See, so, here we have 2023 paper. Now, first question, let's read about it. So, what does the question reads? Question reads that what do you understand by moral integrity and professional efficiency? in the context of corporate governance in India, illustrate with suitable examples. Now, moral integrity is again a keyword on which the question is centered and I will not say that this is something which is something out of the box or something out of the blue. If you have prepared, you might be knowing already what is integrity, fine, and professional efficiency also you might be knowing. Now, question reads that you need to tell about moral integrity and professional efficiency in the context of corporate governance in India and not only you need to talk about it in the context of corporate governance, you have to illustrate with the help of suitable examples. Now, you have to pick examples where basically professional efficiency and moral integrity was present and how it has contributed in the success of corporate and one example where moral integrity or professional efficiency either one is absent or both were absent and how it had led to the downfall of corporate. Okay, so you need to, you need to give these kind of an examples. Questions nature is not very deep, but giving relevant example is something where the tricky part comes and where few of the aspirants might have faced some problem. Then let's read about the second question. International aid is an accepted form of helping resource challenged nations. Comment on ethics in contemporary international aid. Support your answer with suitable example. Now, international aid again is directly mentioned in unit 6 fine of your syllabus and they are asking on this international aid. Now, what the main aspect of the question is? Comment on ethics in contemporary international aid. You need to comment on whether international aid is ethical or not and that you have to support with suitable examples. You have to support it with the help of suitable examples. So, issue that we, uh, so the, the pattern that we find here is that the question's level is not that much high but Having examples, uh, giving examples is something where you need to, for which you need to have a, a little bit more specific kind of knowledge. Then the question was on corruption. No, actually it is not on corruption, it is on the crisis of value. If you read the question, question says corruption is the manifestation of the failure of core values in society. In your opinion, what measures can be adopted to uplift the core values? Okay, again, very direct question from the topic of value inculcation. But giving examples again is something which is a little bit more tricky part. So, what we find? Questions, they are moving from, they, some years they are generic, some years they are very specific domain based. Now, you find this particular thing that, okay, if question seems to be very direct, if questions seem to be very direct, if questions are directly coming from your syllabus, is it this good news for you? Or whether that is a good news when questions are not that direct? Many of you will say that when questions are very much direct, that is a good news for us. But you see this particular thing. It's actually not a good news. It's actually not a good news. Why? Because of the fact that you see that now when you are writing paper in 2024 or let's say some of you might be writing in 25, 26 even. What has happened from 2013-14 till the present times, we find that now there is a lot of resource availability in the market. A lot of resources are there in the market and most of the times what is happening most of the students are reading from common resource some similar common resources are there they are reading and what happens basically you are not able to produce that x factor if a question is directly coming on integrity only and they are asking the role of integrity in public services or why integrity is important in public services everybody will be able to write but you need to portray an X factor. Now, the students who are writing very simple, very generic, when the questions are, paper, the, the students are writing answers on a very expected line, what is happening? They are landing in this particular range of 
But the students who are able to portray this particular X factor in their answers, they are the ones who go in the range of 140, 145. Now, what is this X factor that I am talking about? So, basically, guys, you see this thing that in a good answer, there are actually five components that are needed. Number one is that keywords are there or not in your answers. Do you, are you lacing your answer with adequate number of keywords? Let me give you the example of certain keywords let me give you the example of certain keywords here fine uh, okay so here we have uh, basically 2023 questions and their answers okay and uh, what we were talking about we were talking about the first question i already sh uh, have shown you this on the screen the question re reads what do you understand by moral integrity and professional efficiency in the context of corporate governance and in india illustrate with suitable examples now, what we can do, we can explain that first of all in introduction that what we can do, we can strengthen the premise that moral integrity and professional efficiency are two most important or these are core or these are quintessential elements of corporate governance. Both moral integrity and professional efficiencies are integral aspects of the corporate governance and they help in shaping the ethical culture accountability and long term success of a corporate long term success of a corporate fine this is something that we can talk about then moving on then moving on after that what we are going to do first we have strengthened the premise and then after that next what we are going to do next we can talk about these particular keywords where we can explain what is moral integrity and what is professional efficiency because first part of the question is they are asking what do you understand by them so you can explain moral integrity professional efficiency right now i'm not going in that particular part then the third part that comes here is that they have also asked they have also asked to write about examples they have also asked to write the examples so here what we have done here we have taken the example of compassionate capitalism of infosys now, when we talk about Infosys, Infosys has followed this compassionate capitalism, which entails both professional efficiency and moral integrity. There are four components of compassionate capitalism that is social responsibility, employee centric approach, ethical governance, and wealth distribution. Because of this compassionate capitalism, what has happened? Infosys has been able to maintain high standards of integrity, and also because of this, they have they have they actually have become very much efficient, which is reflected in the increased shareholders' wealth. Fine. Then at the same time, we also have other examples. We also have other examples, and here we have example of Tata also, which have adhered to the excellent business ethics while maintaining professional efficiency. On the other hand, examples just Satyam scam, okay, uh, Kingfisher's business conduct, Chanda Kocher scam that we find. We find here that what was there, what was missing, moral integrity was missing and it has led to the downfall of these particular corporates. Then after that, next example that we have here is uh, the next example that we have here. Uh, I would like to discuss about the international aid question. Now, I told you that international aid, what it is fine, that is not a difficult part, but when we talk about the ethics of international aid and supporting this aspect with the suitable example is a tricky part. Let's talk about that. Now you see, after you have discussed the international aid, which will not be very much tricky, you need to talk about the ethical issues in the context of foreign aid. Now, either you support foreign aid, or international aid, or you oppose international aid. In order to make your answer stand apart from the crowd, you need to have some keywords, you need to have some kind of references, some, you need to give some authenticity to your answer. Now you see here, we have certain references. Here, if you see, we have certain references. We have the references of certain of the books. We have references of certain of the books here. And uh, two of the books reference we have here. Number one, number one, number one is this elusive quest for growth. Number one that we have here is this elusive quest for growth. Then we have white man's burden and then we have dead aid. Now, these particular books have opposed the idea of foreign aid. Now, I don't expect that you should have read these books and you should have reproduced that in the examination. That is not practically possible. But at least, at least, and this is a very important lesson. 
at least keywords that are mentioned in our syllabus as i told you there are 31 keywords or at least the things that are directly mentioned you need to have some keywords on every on all those particular things you need to have some keywords on all those things you need to have some case study on all these particular things you need to have some contemporary examples so international aid is provided in the syllabus so when a kind of a question will come on the ethics of international aid you should have some ready made templates okay which we have already discussed in the class also so these books elusive quest for growth white man's burden and dead aid have opposed idea of foreign aid no points are those generic only which you might have written anyhow but these three books they will give the authenticity to your points for example foreign aids prevents the nation from searching their own solution countries which receive foreign aid they become dependent on the donor nations africa is a continent where the countries have received so much of foreign aid but they have not been able to industrialize many of them foreign aids are accompanied on quid pro quo basis you give uh, we give you aid you give us something in return give us a military base or something like that okay secondly then we when we talk about the foreign aid foreign aid there are empirical evidences where foreign aid has helped also and here we have taken the case study of millennium village project of kenya millennium village project of kenya where through the foreign aid what has happened kickstart capital seed capital is provided and many of the villages they have escaped from the poverty okay prosperity has come imr mmr have improved here so we have this positive examples also so what we need to do then we will conclude okay foreign aid positives and negatives and then we need to conclude that foreign aid should be given this continuation is not a thing but it should be continued keeping keeping certain principles in mind number one foreign aid should be directed on capacity building of a nation fine without expectation foreign aid should be given and foreign aid should be as far as possible should be of untied nature conditionality should not be attached because every country has their own different needs okay now my point that uh, is coming here is that you need to have some ready made templates you need to have some ready made keywords at least on the things that are provided in the answers okay that are provided there so basically so basically now the point that comes here now the point that comes here is that what things should be kept in mind what things should be kept in mind while you are preparing while you are preparing okay so first thing first thing that should be there first thing that you should be focusing upon is completeness of the syllabus number one completeness completeness as i told you that we have 31 keywords as i told you that we have 31 keywords we have eight units out of this seven unit are theory and one unit is a case study there should not be any keyword in your syllabus there should not be any dimension which is not duly covered in your notes which is not duly covered in your notes and at least the things that are mentioned fine in your syllabus you have as far as possible keywords examples some case studies if possible on these now just how to prepare for that let me show you one particular uh, glimpse here what to show uh, let me show you one particular glimpse here okay okay so let's say there is this particular question let's say there is this particular question on the, uh, there is this particular dimension in international aid that we just discussed now there was this particular question on the, uh, the sorry there was this one article that came in the hindu newspaper with respect to the mcc grant that was given to nepal and why there was this controversy that was going on now this was the case of international aid why the people were criticizing there it contains arguments with respect to that international aid criticism of international aid was provided here now this article actually came i think one and a half two years back so you need to collect such kind of examples you need to collect such kind of an examples now you see this particular thing you see this particular thing that uh, uh, one more dimension i want to show you that uh, you see russia ukraine war was going on on russia ukraine war there was a multiple articles that have already got published in the newspapers where they have introspected that whether what russia did was actually a self defense whether it was a preemptive action that was taken by russia or whether the russia was driven by some kind of imperialistic ambitions 
find was it something to teach a lesson to the west or was it really russia concerned with respect to, to their own uh, the, the their own sovereignty fine so there was these articles that came in the paper so my point is that when you my point is that what i am i want to say here is that number one needs to be completeness and then we come to the second component that is needed we come to the second component that is needed and second component is that you have to ensure you have to ensure that you are enriching you are enriching your content with current affairs you are enriching your content with current affairs because multiple questions have already been asked on current affairs there is a question already asked on the russia ukraine invasion and in the aftermath of russia ukraine invasion they have asked the question on ethics of war so they have asked already question on russia ukraine's invasion russia's invasion of ukraine and the ethics of war so number one is to be completeness number two you have to enrich your notes through the current affairs question on question on reverse migration that happened on that question has been asked the question asked about the ethical caregiving state then question as russia ukraine war got started as russia ukraine war got started they have asked the question on the ethics of war they asked the question on ethics of war then what happened myanmar coup happened uh, in myanmar military took punta in myanmar military took over they asked the question now as military took over in myanmar what happened there was the rohingya refugee crisis that enhanced okay that got aggravated and the same year they asked the question on the ethics of refugee ethics of refugee they have asked the question is it clear now there is ai going so much no wonder if they ask the question on ethics of ai in the coming paper and there have so many articles that have come on the ethics of ai okay even in my classes uh, in the editorial uh, in the newspaper discussion we have discussed so many of the articles so current affairs you need to enrich your notes with the current affairs number one completeness everything mentioned in the syllabus you need to have crisp notes on that then you need to enrich it through the help of current affairs through the help of current affairs okay then thirdly that third thing that you need here is that it's very much important that you see that what you are reading whether you can apply it in the real exam scenario or not so you need to be thorough on previous year questions you need to be thorough on previous year questions aspirants they are going for test series and all such kind of a thing but i'll advise them that rather than going for test series first pvi pyqs are the gold mine and in ethics there is a lot of overlap that has been there on values that is one topic so many times the question have been asked so repetition rate is very much high in ethics so PYQs, you should be thorough on that. And my approach is that don't go year wise. Don't go year wise. Fine. You need to categorize the questions. You need to categorize the questions as per unit. Okay. Questions of unit one, questions on unit two, questions on unit three. Likewise, seven unit in theory. You need to divide questions in seven parts. And as you are moving, you need to solve those questions. Unit one, unit one completed. All the questions on unit one should be there then after that fourth that fourth thing that you need here fourth thing that you need here is fourth thing that you need to hear is ethical vocab enrichment ethical vocab enrichment and this particular vocab enrichment is not only going to help you in ethics but it is also going to help you in essay for example certain book references you some of the book references that can be used liberally in ethics paper fine now what i am writing here book references anecdotes book references anecdotes keywords okay some of the case studies you might be have having the ready made material for example on ai okay you should have some ready made material for example profiteering in the times of crisis selling 600 rupees oxygen cylinder for 25000 rupees during the covid pandemic is it justified or not is it justified or not arguments in favor arguments against okay so you need to have certain references here you need to have certain references here fine i hope you are able to understand this particular thing fine i hope you are able to understand this particular thing now let me show you that what type of vocab enrichment i am talking about 
what type of vocab enrichment i am talking about okay for example uh, just um, let's say fine let's say okay ethics helps in realization of rights and duties fine you have let's say an example here of oscar schindler who was a german industrialist and a nazi party member but saved 1200 jews during the holocaust you have the example of florence nightingale who during the crimean war fine played a very important role in improving the condition of hospitals so what happened they realized these duties because of their strong ethics because of their strong ethics okay so fine uh, how ethics helps in the making sound decision making so during cuban crisis one of a captain or uh, basically one of a uh, officer who was second in command he was the one who actually saved the world from the nuclear warfare fine so my point the point that i'm trying to make up here the point that i'm trying to make up here is that you need to have some content you need to have some kind of a content which can help you in enhance uh, which can help you in writing very good answers and uh, let's take some more examples also in this particular capacity let's take some more examples also in this particular uh, capacity i'll show you here it on the screen when man is willing and eager the gods join in fine now this is a quotation the, when a man is willing and eager the god joins in so what this particular conviction what this particular quotation can be used in this particular can be used when you are talking about the conviction when you are talking about the devotion when you are talking about dedication try to be a rainbow in somebody's cloud compassion fine compassion or empathy there have been the questions fine uh, <coughs> that saddest part of life is that science gathers knowledge faster than society gathers wisdom okay so the saddest part of life is that science gathers knowledge faster we are advancing we are developing weapons more deadly and deadlier weapons faster then the society is getting the wisdom that okay but then the society is understanding the repercussions of that particular thing okay so for example we have many examples okay uh, on apathy let's say when we talk about the apathy fine indifference there is a very excellent quotation of plato the price good men pay for indifference towards public affair is to be ruled by evil men okay so likewise what you need to do what i'll suggest you here is that now you see you need to have different different segments and on different different segments you need to collect uh, uh, examples you need to collect examples now as i'm talking about the references so basically for example uh, for example many of the classical works that are there i'm not going that you go and you read them but they are being mentioned very often in the newspapers in the editorial so you can just collect uh, them what you can do you can simply just collect them okay for example there is this corruption there is this corruption okay so corruption can have addictive effect demonstrative effect domino effect bandwagon effect okay so point that i'm talking about is that you need to have some enriched content uh, some, some kind of a uh, value added content some kind of an ethical vocabulary you need to have which you will be getting throughout the year from the newspapers from the articles from the editorials from the books you need to collect them and you need to classify them unit wise and have to use them okay in your answers this is something which will give that particular x factor that i was talking about the text factor that i was talking about so you need to have such kind of a content all the time now for example uh, and how this particular content helps how this particular content helps let me give you one example here let me give you one example here the example that i would like to give you here is that see when we talk about the uh, when we talk about tolerance we always talk about that tolerance is a desirable trait and yes it is a desirable trait but suppose if a question is coming where it says that sometimes tolerance might become problematic thing suppose there is a, this kind of a question now you writing against tolerance is very much difficult but you see there is this particular uh, the open society and it, its enemies written by karl popper and he mentions very articulately here that uh, that if a society is endlessly tolerant without any limits its ability to be tolerant will eventually be seized or destroyed by the intolerant if I am all the time intolerant, people are entering in my home, they are taking away my things, I am tolerant, okay, no problem, okay. Then after a time, I will not be able to be tolerant anymore. Why? Because I will be overpowered by the intolerant. Then the grain of tolerance will even be lost. Now, what you can do? You can suggest this particular thing. You can suggest this particular thing with these particular kind of a references, Karl Popper or Open Society and its enemies, any such kind of a thing. Now, don't you think these kind of things 
will help you in essay paper also. They will enrich your essay paper. For example, when we talk about objectivity, we explain objectivity that the decision should be taken on the basis of evidence. But some real life examples. So let's say objectivity Nehru chose Ambedkar even though op Ambedkar was from the opposite camp when the constitution was being drafted. This is an example of objectivity. Ambedkar was chosen because of his par excellence which he had on the matters of law. Okay, so this is something that you need to be collecting upon. Okay, throughout the throughout your um, preparation journey, which is going to enrich you here ethics as well as essay. Fine. So these are certain things that you need to be uh, keeping in mind when uh, the paper is concerned. When we talk about uh, case study, something that you cannot take lightly. Horo command on case study should be there, but I will not discuss the case study in this section because it will be too much lengthy then. Okay, I will be discussing it on some other session. So, this is got guys all about it. I hope that you have understood it. So, that is all for today. Thank you so much.